I didn't know you could do oh. that. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Why not? You're trying to design it. You're working on it. Because you got that overlap right from November to May. You're still the trustee. How are you? You're designing it. You want back in. You keep going. If you got good help, you look like you got good help. All right. Uh, everyone, welcome. Every I'm going to call the meeting to order. Before we stand up and do the Pledge of Allegiance, I would like a motion to allow Trustee Chris Meyer to attend remotely. Second. By Trustee Browski, seconded by uh, Trustee Tanucci. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, you're in the game. Thank you. And uh, all rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the history of the Republic Welcome, everyone. I can't believe how dark it is. That's uh, depressing. Dark. But it's fall. Um, and it's warm, right? So that's nice. I guess we'll keep it that way. And I hope everyone's safe in Florida because I don't want to be there right now. So um, the, the first thing on the agenda is the homeowners associations. Um, I don't know if anyone is here from Ravina East. Anybody here? Uh, Gregory, are you here? If not, then we'll keep moving. Public comment is the next item on the agenda. Chris. I'm back. You're back. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> I bet you saw you get rid of it. Um, well, it's the same ongoing problem. They have, thank goodness we haven't had rain, but the farm has not installed that rain time. We sit down, they're as high again. They haven't been back since, I think it was the weekend after Memorial Day. They did it once. And that's it. Mm -hmm. The weeds have encroached so much into my property, and I can't keep up with it. I'm not going to be spending $1,800 to have someone come in and take out all the weeds and five inches, six inches of dirt and replace it with nice compost and so I can try to keep ahead of it. They're not maintaining it. Grass is this high, and the waddle is shoulder high, which you know is invasive, and so is the ragweed, which is shoulder high. And my grandson has a very bad allergy. What do I do? do I oh, okay, but hold on a second. Jeff, can you give us your online here? Because I thought they were putting a swale in, not a pipe, right? Jeff, can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Where are we okay. at? With yeah, I was out there a couple of weeks ago. I met with Tom with the landscaping company, and they did install that swale, and they had mowed everything back. I had looked at the berm. There was nothing over six inches high on that berm, so it was, you know, as of a couple of weeks ago, it was pretty easy to walk across that. Uh, I have not been back there since that, so um, all the information that Chris has uh just shared here this morning or right now um i haven't been out there for a couple of weeks oh jeff it's a lot longer than six inches <laughs> well, the uh, that's, that's what that's what it was a couple of weeks ago um like i said it's been likely grown over the last two to three weeks and you didn't see the waddle it's shoulder high so is the ragweed what is, is, is somebody uh, yeah, yeah i was going to ask that too. i don't know what Whole thing. It looks like a, a thistle, but it's very invasive. Okay. Do we have somebody who's monitoring this? I mean, is she on her own? I don't know. You guys tell me. Yeah, Jeff goes out there quite frequently. Well, Corey Weeks is, I mean, we, do, do you know that this is going on? How, how do you know? How do we know if you don't know? I got an update from two weeks ago when Jeff went out there for side visits and reported that what he just said, that the grass was six inches tall and that the swale was installed. And I mean, he met on site with. So. But what happened to the drain tile they promised? I don't know. Jeff, I thought that changed to a swale, but that's what. Jeff? No. Drain? Um, that goes back a few months on the conversation that, you know, there was a lot of different options kind of thrown out there and 
it was uh, landed on that the drainage swale would be restoring the uh, drainage that was, you know, installed with, you know, the defunct Abbott Farms PUD pro project and the drainage pipe was not required. And that was done? The swale was put in? Yes, correct. Yep. Okay. Where? Like if I was, if I drive out there, will I be able to see it? You would be able to see it. Um, you'd have to get you'd have to get access to it from you know going through the uh, Chris or her neighbor's property, and then it's on the uh, back side of that fence. Right. So it's behind your fence. Is that correct? Not behind my fence. They haven't done a thing. So how does that work? This is. So it seems like our contact there is actually the landscaper. We're not talking with anybody from Abbott, we're talking to the landscaper. It feels like we need contact with a decision maker. I thought we I thought we'd passed into that months ago. Yeah, I, thought, I thought we had a plan here. So are we in contact with Abbott? Yeah. Not yes. just the landscaper, but Abbott? Yes. We did. We did have a plan, and when Jeff went out there and inspected it two weeks ago, found that it was. Can I can I ask that somebody go out there tomorrow? Maybe it's gonna be nice and take pictures and show us what it is and yeah. tell us what'll be done. Well, we have, yeah, and share it with the board. And what's the plan to keep it that way? I don't want to have Christmas with her. <laughs> um, it might you're, be nice. You're to from have the peanut gallery. <laughs> But I hear you, yeah. Well, we've had one Christmas with her. We don't need to have a second. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. Let's do that. And please report back, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. I think. Are you going to be home tomorrow? Um, some of the day. Uh, more in the afternoon, but I have physical therapy on my shoulder at 2 o'clock. Um, if I go to your house, can I see from, can I, is there a way I can? Yeah, just bring the doorbell and I'll take you in the backyard. I'm working now. The gate is open, it's not locked. Okay. It's your, obviously your back gate. Yes. Backyard, you can just head out. Okay. And it's the neighbor to my right. They've done nothing on the left. I mean. <laughs> The neighbor or, or the left or my left, if you're facing my yeah. house. Yeah. Neighbor to my right, uh, Patty Duran was with me at several meetings. Right. The lady next door on the left is pretty much just is not able to come to the meeting. So not, nothing's been done behind her regard. And it's it's as bad as yours? It's worse. He never touched it at all. I mean, I'm not just the only one. It's, it's a mess. I guess nobody else complains. And it's not that I'm a complainer. I have <coughs> put up with this for quite a while. Yeah. Some people just don't see those things because they just don't see them. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, hopefully this will be the last time you're here. Um, uh, not that we don't mind you coming. <laughs> I didn't mean that about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. All right. Any um, any other public comment in the room? Um, any public comment online? If not, um, we'll move to the public safety reports, and I don't think we have anyone here tonight. Um, we'll move to the consent agenda. Uh, there's two items on it. The approval of the September uh, 2024 bill warrant and approval of the regular board meeting minutes from the September 24th, 2024 meeting. Um, does anyone have any concerns or does somebody want to make a motion to approve? Second. Mo moved by uh, Trustee O'Connor, seconded by Trustee O'Reilly. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee O'Connor. Aye. Trustee O'Reilly. Aye. Trustee Barasky? Aye. Trustee Jamil? Aye. Trustee Kritzmeyer? Aye. Trustee Janucci? Aye. Okay, motion carried. 
No, I need to make a motion to open the public hearing, right? Um, or I need to ask for a motion to open a public hearing. Uh, anyone want to make a motion to open a public hearing regarding amendments to the Deer Trail Annexation Agreement? So moved. moved by Trustee Borowski, seconded by? Second. Second by uh, uh, Trustee O'Reilly. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carried. We are now in public hearing. Uh, Mode, anyone have any public comments? Yes, sir. Mike, Mike DeMar. Yes. I've got um, a couple questions, and I don't, because I don't know too much what's been happening, but um, what's the recapture agreement? Well, the original annexation agreement, both for Karen's Corner and for Deer Trail, spoke generally about uh, recapture agreements, but it also was uh, drafted with the expectation that both of the developments were proceeding more or less contemporaneously. Um, and what we have made clear about in the draft annexation agreement amendment is that if Deer Trail goes first, then it would be able to get its proportionate share uh, of the cost from the Karen's Corner development. But that's not really what the agreement currently says. No, they're silent as to between the two properties because it, it was expected that you all were going to have an agreement. To my understanding, there is none. There is none, and there's no expectations because it wasn't said so. My expectation was whoever puts it in first pays. They pay for it, and when so you want to connect, with no, with no recapture. Agreement. Well, if you look at both of the annexation agreements, you will see there is a reference to recapture, and this is simply a more specific statement about it with respect to the two properties, because the annexation agreements did before reference the expectation as you had represented and as Rick Swanson had represented that you'd reach an agreement as to the installation of that sewer. As that didn't happen, we're now focusing on what was generally stated about recapture to say that if they put it in first, absent an agreement between the two properties, they would be able to get their proportionate share as with any other recapture. But that was never agreed to in writing or verbally. What's in your maybe annexation maybe agreement, maybe no, it, it is in your annexation agreement and theirs, maybe. the original one regarding recapture. And the school. It doesn't identify which parties will be paying recapture to whom. It simply says that to the extent a party puts in the sewer, they would be entitled to the oversized cost for purposes of recapture for anyone that then uses it. Maybe um, we can get a copy somewhere that says that. Okay. Okay, and the other question I had was the old pencil left turn lane. From what I understand, it was a 10 year, $45,000 fundable cash bond. Am I right about that? Uh, not, not, more or less. Okay, and that was in 2018? But you haven't paid that. Right. But it, was, it wasn't 10 years from then, it was 10 years from when you pay it. Okay, but now I understand that it's changing to a lower amount from 45000 to 32500 as a fee, not refundable. That is what there has been a proposed agreement for. That hasn't been approved by the village yet, nor has it been signed by the parties, but my understanding is that the McNaughton Group is amenable to having <coughs> that lower amount without the potential clawback. Okay, and how would that affect Karen's corner? Not at all. You have an agreement. Okay, and if we were thinking 10 years from 
one way to get an agreement was put in place, but that pays for it. No, that's not what it says. It doesn't say that you can not pay for it and have the clock run out. Okay. You have to pay before the clock starts to tick. And then the last question I have here is about the, uh, the caps. I guess the annotation agreement calls for certain cap size and width and depth. I don't think so, right? Same size? No. No, the, the annexation agreement has always had a minimum size of the path, but it was always going to be subject to the ultimate approval of the plan unit development. And the P PUD for both Karen's Corner and Deer Trail reflected an 8 foot path in a 10 foot easement. And that's what is still provided for in the proposed uh, renewal of the PUD here. So you're saying that's what's on the current approved engineering? The, 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 uh, the engineering that was approved in 2017 18 period, yes. Yeah, eight foot depth? Yes. But if it shows six foot path, that's going to No, be the annexation agreement says a minimum six foot path. Okay. No, the engineering plans which were approved back at that time was the eight foot path. And I'll, I'll defer to, uh, to Jeff Perry, the engineer, but my recollection is was the eight foot path, 10 foot easement. Okay, so Karen's corner is not going to be held to the same approval that you're redoing. Trail. Well, the deer trail approval that is under consideration tonight <clears throat> is largely reflective of what was approved in 2017 and 2018. If you want to come back, you would be accountable to the same standard as what was previously approved. Okay. And who could, would that be the right person for me to talk to about? Showing me where in the annexation agreement it says that whoever puts in the sewer first number. I can help. You can? Okay, thank you. That just makes sense. That's what it says. That's why it makes sense. <laughs> I remember us discussing this. Yes, yes. None no, no, of this is new. And, and the the, the, the turn lane was to mitigate the additional traffic that we knew but even back then. Yeah, all, all, all of these issues that are reflective of the, the only things that are changing, or all, with one exception, and I'll get to that, the only thing that's changing in the annexation agreement, other than clarifying a lot of timing things, because the approvals were done in 2017 with preliminary and 2018 final, and they last under our subdivision ordinance, which is why we're going through this again. But there were some things that were reflective of the original approvals in the annexation agreement. And so to clarify some of those sequencing issues, we have these amendments. Now there is one, uh, I, I would say one substantive change, and that's reflective of the garages. And uh, as I understand it, the garages, uh, under the original agreement, it said any front-facing garages have to be set back from the front facade by 10 feet. Yeah. They have asked that they could have up to seven garages that would uh, face the street, straight up as part of the front, or the facade. So that's the, I think really the only substantive difference in that, and then the other one is that change from the $45,000 uh, potential refundable deposit to just a flat out payment of $32,500. Are there any other comments for the public hearing? I, I, Vic, if he, you could remind me, what's the timing of the left turn? Is, is, I would not be able to remind you because I don't know. <laughs> but Jeff, Jeff, you want to? Jeff, you, you, oh, there you go. Jeff, you want to answer that question? Uh, 
the, we're talking the left turn lane uh, as on Old Hicks Old at Hicks 53. And, when, when will that happen? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that that uh, was ever discussed was to my recollection. <laughs> <laughs> the timing wasn't there, and that was going to be something later. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, Deer Trail and, and Karen's Corner didn't go forward right after they were got the engineering approval, and then COVID happened when the state did their project. So um, the uh, the game has changed a little bit in that regard, too. So, so we're going to hold the money. Uh, we're going to we're going to keep the money for that project under the draft annexation agreement amendment. They would make a payment, and it's ours for that whenever it occurs. The original annexation agreement anticipated that um, when they make the payment, we would hold it for ten years for use in that project. But if the project did not occur. And I think that goes back to the timing issue. I don't think we ever had one, and Jeff just confirmed that. If it, if it did not occur within that 10-year period, then the money would be refunded to, uh, to the developer. Okay, can, can we start requesting that it be started, that, that we start working on it? Because God knows we've been working on 22 forever. Um, you know, maybe this will be the same thing, and it's certainly needed there. I, again, I don't know what are the triggers for that. Jeff might have some insight on that. Jeff? I keep pointing at, at Bill's laptop. I know Jeff. that's not Jeff. Jeff. I know you keep pointing to an empty laptop. chair, Vic, I'm yeah, sure. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, uh, to make that happen, you're right, uh, Bobby, that it's going to take a while. So uh, 10 years would go fast if uh, Route 22 is any uh, indication of uh, how, how uh, the dealings with IDOT go. Well, it doesn't hurt to start it. Correct. Um, I'd like to ask Jeff if there's even a, a ability to put it in because of current homes, easement restrictions, and the fact that the state just put in a brand new turn lane on old 53, what are the chances of, of it even happening or being able to happen because there's no space there? Also, as you all know, Terrence Corner reduced the number of lots to you know, 20 from 34. So the whole thing is about 25 percent not less lots. But it still would be nice. But I just don't think it would just probably answer there's even the, the ability to have the to, to do it. Jeff, did you hear that? Well, maybe we need to know that. Jeff, did you hear that? Yeah, I, I heard that. I was tracking with it. And yeah, that's part of, you know, the initial steps once it gets kicked off to look at um, the land rights and what's available out there. So um, once the process is initiated, that's one of the first things that's going to be looked at. So look at that it can't be done. And you don't need 10 years. I, I guess so. I don't know I what mean, other. I mean, know, I, right, we took a very, very high level, you know, call it a 50,000 foot look at it. And there is right away out there to do it. So once it gets kicked off to um, an initiated, a formal, you know, go, no go, if you will, we'll be there. But on a very, very high level preliminary uh, look at it, there is right away and it can happen. Any other public comment? If if not, I would look for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Moved by Trustee Riley, seconded by Second. by Trustee Borowski. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And no nays. So motion carried. Um, so we're going to move to number eight, which is discussion and consideration of resolution approving the amendment to your trail annexation agreement. I think you have a presentation, correct? Is that right? Do you have a presentation? We did have a power. Did you want to do that, or do we need to do that? Do you, you guys want to yeah, go? I, I, it's just really pretty brief. Did, so you want me to bring that up? Sure. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. Only if they want it brought up. Let me, uh, Black talks don't start till 9 o'clock. We'll do it for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Opening night. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess maybe I would just start off while Chris is pulling up. Uh, my name is John Berry. I'm with the Development. And 
we're here with our development team tonight, uh, particularly Paul McNaughton. He is the uh, owner and founder of uh, McNaughton Development. Uh, family owned business now, uh, 40, 40 plus years experience. Uh, the second generation is coming in now also to uh, take the business over. So uh, it's our first project back in Long Grove since the early 90s. It's our first project in Long Grove since the early 90s. Uh, we built a couple of spec homes that sold actually right off of Madden Royal Melbourne, so uh, we're very excited to be back here tonight uh, in, in town. Um, we're based out of Burr Ridge. Uh, Paul has been awarded over 50 uh, Golden Key Awards for excellence in uh, custom home building and subdivision design. We've developed, we zoned and developed over 50 subdivisions, uh, a couple thousand acres. Uh, across the Chicagoland area and uh, built hundreds of homes and other scattered site, uh, sites uh, throughout the area. Um, the uh, core business is in the western suburbs right now, uh, building communities such as Hinsdale, Clarendon Hills, Western Springs, Naperville, Burr Ridge, Downers Grove, Willowbrook, and LaGrange Park. The last few years our business has brought us a little bit further north. Uh, we have active developments right now. We're finishing up one in uh, Lake Forest. Uh, we're in Kildare and Highland Park. Also. Uh, the, the one element through all of our developments is uh, we are high-end custom home development. And we, uh, we concentrate primarily uh, on the luxury uh, million dollar plus range uh, is our market. Right now, but we do keep an eye. You know, we do target the traditional two-story buyer also. Four bedroom up. Can you go to that next slide, Chris? Uh, so it's it's Bill, by the way, though. That's okay. Over, oh, I thought. Yeah, he's there. got it. Sorry. <laughs> but you're doing a good job of controlling it. <laughs> I thought he was controlling it. Sorry. Uh, so this is the aerial of the property. I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with, as it was mentioned. The property was annexed in 2017, and the PUD was approved in 2018 for 26 uh, single-family sites. Thank you. Um, our intention is to develop this property uh, as it was approved in 2018, uh, with the same 26 lots uh, that average a half acre, uh, the open, same open space corridors and amenities that were approved at that time, the same roadway alignment and the same public and private improvements. Uh, we believe that this uh, development will benefit the public in so far as we are sending uh, sanitary sewer to the area, preserving and enhancing uh, the natural character of the property, and uh, we're providing a passive recreation feature in the form of a pathway around the property. Uh, the other uh, benefit we believe we're bringing into the community is we're providing some new housing stock, 26 new homes. Uh, this will, uh, these homes are going to focus on the, the needs of buyers today. Uh, focusing on first floor living, they'll have optional, uh, optional finishes in the basement for the lower level. Um, this is going to be a right size product. Uh, we move down buyer and still family. They're of the highest quality exterior materials and interior materials. And um, we believe that we, we really have a good pulse on what the buyers are looking for uh, in this market as far as the finished product. Thank you. Uh, we believe that the plan does an exceptional job of preserving the natural features of the property. Uh, as you Recall it was approved as a conservation design development back in 2018. Uh, there's 23 acres being preserved on the site. There's nine and a half acres of wetlands. We're preserving 97% of that wetlands, over 9.2 acres for preserving. Mm -hmm. uh, we're those wetlands will be enhanced with uh, upland prairie buffers, which uh, we'll be managing. Uh, over the next three years to ensure that those buffers are uh, established properly. And uh, they will be subject of a, a future maintenance plan uh, that the homeowners association will eventually take over. 
Uh, landscaping, uh, we're going to be doing an extensive landscape, amount of landscaping along the subdivision entry. Uh, that entry landscaping will be supplemented by a streetscape uh, landscaping that will be done as we um, construct the individual homes. As I mentioned, we're going to be adding wetland buffers throughout the site and uh, we'll be uh, providing some uh, split rail fencing in the uh, in, in certain sensitive areas around these buffers. What is wetland buffers? What exactly is that? Uh, we're going to be just preserving some areas around the wetlands as far as additional land area. Uh, and people, be able, people can't get into it. Yeah, because I noticed that. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Uh, on lot 22, there's a wetland on that on that lot, and uh, what are we what are we going to do with it? People don't know what to do with conservancy. Yeah, well, the one, the one particular one on lot 22 is is one of the two that there's a, a third of an acre that's going to be uh, mitigated for, and that one on particularly lot 22 is going to be one of those mitigated wetlands. And how do you, how do you do that? Uh, we've gone, our wetland consultants uh, worked with the uh, villages consultants as far as uh, uh, identifying the limits of all the wetlands on the property. Uh, we analyzed everything and then uh, based on an agreement with them, uh, we'll be paying into a, either a wetland bank or a wetland restoration bank. And that was that third of an acre in What if it's a wetland because it's peat? And it happens to be in the way of the driveway. So th that particular area is so very small. If there is any unsuitable soil in the material, uh, then we would excavate that out prior to either placing the foundation or placing the driveway. Do you have to drive, drive pilings or anything? The soil test that we've done on the property right now indicated no, no need to do any kind of case on to pilings. I'm just curious. Uh, it just, to, just to wrap it up, I guess, uh, you know, the development, we think that as in 2018, we think this development will be a fine addition to the, uh, the surrounding area. It will be a fine addition to Long Road as a whole. So, uh, again, if extending the sanitary sewer, the preservation, the open space, uh, the additional recreation, uh, uh, all will be a great public benefit. Uh, I know I didn't mention it yet, but I, I just, our, we are expecting the price point to be uh, 1.25 million to 1.5 plus. Uh, we are anticipating our model opening in June, and uh, we expect to be uh, built out of subdivision by the end of the And we will open. With that, if you have any questions, we'd we'll be happy to answer. You want to show your video? Sure, that'd be great. Yeah, we did a little uh, anima animated flyer video uh, trying to illustrate uh, the layout of the development, the open space, and the uh, pathway system. And why are the streets again? The music's not working. Oh, yeah, you got to get that. <laughs> oh, I have my volume turned off, so sorry. Um, I think it's going to mess everything up. Yeah, I don't want to mess it up. Yeah, I think you might have seen it. Um, we just sent this to show you. I mean, this is going to help us on our sales and marketing. Um, but, Oops. guys, we, 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 as a builder, we, we've got a winner. We know our customers. We know what they want. And we're not even tapping in yet. I'm still thinking I'm going to have to ask their community, but hey, it doesn't matter. Those people get together great. You know, you can still be 60 and get along with a 50 or 45. What, what square footage are you anticipating? So the, uh, the ranches are going to uh, average, <clears throat> the base ranches will average about 2,500 to 2,700 square feet. Uh, the uh, master bedroom first floor homes will be approximately uh, 3,000 square feet. And then the traditional two story will probably be in the 34, 3,500 square foot range. Now, on those ranch homes from our last five years, 
I would say that 75% finish on the racket, finish the lower level. Mm -hmm. Are these similar to uh, what's over your Kemper? Yeah, they're, they're similar to those. <laughs> they're all similar, a little different, you know, but um, people know, and I'm, I tried to explain to everyone that not one community, five communities, um, we're, we're on our roll. And the exteriors of these, for for us, that's a lot of that's a lot of no stone and no brick. Oh, John, I mean, I have my answer. Of, yeah, it, we're the the architectural design that we've done very successful. We, We've been kind of refining this project, this this product over like the last 10 years, where we, <clears throat> we first started this move down by our product, and uh, this is the what we call that coastal transitional product, uh, and it lends itself to uh, <coughs> typical like wainscot uh, masonry, either brick or stone in the front elevation, and the siding on the second on the, on the sides and the upper levels with the Additional siding details of its board bat and shape. Um, and we, if I can add, um, we went with the cottage, Cape Cod, because people love the front porches. And Brian, uh, my architect of over 20 years, is here, and a uh, uh, big shot in Amesdale for big homes, but you know, these are, <coughs> these are very attractive. Homes. We don't want an all brick home. People don't want. Them. We 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 don't like a lot of no brick homes. <laughs> we that's a, it's just it's a lot of there's this is the style that is um, crept in with the industrial warehouse look all over the United States. If you find it in Montana, you can find it downtown. You can find it in Minnesota. Texas, Georgia, it's it's the new, the new, and as I'm sure you've seen as well as I've seen, the new becomes old and we go into something else. But typically, typically the homes here are custom and we don't have architectural people on, on here. With the percent of Brick or stone that we anybody we don't have Helen you don't you're no you're we wrong, know the wrong. rules no 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 I understand but I, but I'm saying when, it, when the floor plans can't be every fourth one in the A every fourth one in the B C or any kind of thing you do know about that right. Well, no, I, I thought that went to the architectural commission. Yeah, we made a we made a full presentation as far as and, and we had a self imposed anti uh, regulation that was included in that presentation. And that goes to the elevations as well. So what we did was we we, we proposed to build eight different homes in this development. Each of those homes has two elevations, and we committed to not building the same home next to each other with the exact same elevation. We also committed to not building the same home three in a row at any, at any time. Mm -hmm. You know, the nice thing about the cottage or whatever you want to call the architecture is people all do different colors, and that's what makes it look so nice. It's attractive to drive through. Go ahead, yep. I, I have two questions. One, one I hope is easy. Um, how many uh, school children will be statistically generated? Well, from our experience, again, over the last 10 years when we do these ranch homes, it's very, very little children. We, we recently completed a project in Burr Ridge uh, that we built a new style home. We built 44 of them. We generated two school age children. I like those percentages. <laughs> no, 
No, that's for that. It's for the ranch product, and that again, we believe that that's. Well, what what percentage is up? of ranches is of the total in this, in which sub in the brewery subdivision? No, here. Uh, this, well, no, this one, I mean we we're offering three ranch lands. We're offering two two stories that have mass beds in the first floor. We also are gonna offer three homes that have the traditional two stories with mass bed on the So it's we in, we're anticipating that the majority of the homes will be sold to ranch buyers, but we don't have. Okay. I'm not sure how you work. So you've got X number of houses. Do you plot them out which which goes where, or is that up to people, buyers, to decide where they want to be? We're gonna. Uh, we're going to start off with the subdivision if we want to do three homes. We'll, we'll dictate, obviously, where we want those three homes. But then after that, when the buyers come in, they get to choose where they like to move. Okay, with, within the rules. Within the rules. That's correct. Okay. Always within the rules. <laughs> well, we've been told that before. Hey, can I, I alert. Bobby, <laughs> I mean, can I ask a follow-up question? Because you were the, asking about ranches and so forth. The courtyard homes at Amberley Court in Lake Forest. Were those all ranches or those, um, they look like ranches, were they or not? They were, uh, we built 19 homes there. Uh, all the homes we built were either a ranch or a master bedroom in the first floor. And of the 19, I would probably tell you uh, there was probably 14 of them that were ranches and five were the two stories with the master bedroom in the first floor. God, I was trying to figure that out because they, they they look like there might be an upstairs in some of them. I couldn't tell. So, did you look at those in Lake Forest? No, I didn't. Um, I thought they they turned out nice. Now they're very tight together. There's you can touch the next house open when you open up your window. We don't have that problem here. No. <laughs> so, anyways, but they're yeah was a, they were um, they're a little bit different style than what you have at Kemper Ridge, right? So. And different materials too, so that was interesting. I don't know if that's the type of material you're planning here. The uh, it's, it's similar. It's to the camper with a couple of little features from. Uh, so I'm looking at your guys' brochure. Yes. And I'm um, I'm not as diplomatic and as eloquent as Trustee O'Connor is very often in these meetings, so I apologize for my bluntness. In advance. I look at your brochure and the cover is a beautiful home that I think is very typical of what I'd expect to see in Long Grove. And I look at page two and you got a variety of materials which are brick and stone and I go, dang, nice. I look at your render drawings in this document. To me, the homes in here are just plain ugly. And I don't know why you guys would want to build those in Long Road. To Rita's point, there's not a lot of diversity in materials here. There's not a lot of brick, there's not a lot of stone, there's a lot of quality materials, which are just kind of, I don't know what they are, but quality materials, I guess. But to me, it's just not typical long road homes. I just think they don't fit aesthetically within what we're doing here. We we like custom homes. We like to increase all of our property values. We, um, it, it's just a different architectural style, and frankly, it's, to me, it's very, very impressive. I mean, the lot layout, I get it. Uh, the $32,000, I haven't really talked about yet, but I did a question on that. Maybe we we'll get to that in a little bit. But frankly, I think mean, architecturally, these are these are plot ugly homes, and I don't want to see them architecturally like this in our road. So, why? Well, sorry, I, 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 I don't appreciate that. I appreciate that, too. But. I, I don't. That, that is a terrible. You want to continue with 80 and 90 homes that no one builds anymore. No one wants it all for home. No one, they can't afford it, sir. They can't afford the cost. They don't want a home anymore that looks like everything that you can buy at a Home Depot or a Menards is stuck on that home. Let's do some shutters and glue and chase and some brick and some stone. So we're not trying to do that. We're trying to be creative. Make the village tax dollar. Get people happy. They're willing to 
And we don't have a property tax in the village, so the homes we build here are actually a burden because we have to pay for services to those homes without generating any property tax. Well, all I can tell you, sir, then, is that I know I can make a lot of people move to this village. I'm sure you could. Our homes I'm sure you could. And not the old homes that no one anywhere builds. In, your, in all of your presentation, you talked about the potential buyers. In none of your presentation, did you talk about the current residents? Thank you. I'm done. The current residents, that's all we care about. We wouldn't be here if we didn't think we could sell. You think we're putting out $30 million to not sell? I'm sure you could sell. It's not the argument I'm trying to make. I don't understand your argument. I'm sure. So I take you as a no vote. I didn't say that. I said I like the layout. I just don't like the architecture. I mean, you know, you've got to listen to people that have done this for 45 years, that know what people want. What? All right. I, mean, I said, yeah, I guess I did do I. I don't. I said I'm done. I, those are my comments for now. I yeah, let's, All right. Thank you, sir. Thank let's, you. Yeah, let's keep moving. So. There was a question on the thirty-two thousand. Well, yeah. Um, is that enough to do anything with? Because thirty-two thousand dollars right now doesn't buy us much blacktop. Is that enough money to do anything with that intersection? I thought it was forty-five. Um, well, the number that we had was not intended to cover the full cost. The, you know, when when we developed that with the original annexation agreement, the forty-five thousand, I believe that was based on a fifteen percent contribution for what was the then estimated cost. Um, but it had a provision that if it wasn't fully that cost, there would be a proportionate rebate, and if it wasn't used within 10 years, the entire amount would be refunded. And so in the review of this, especially because since the time of that annexation, the state did improve uh, 53, and so some of the, uh, you know, some of the costs have changed and some of the expectations of what may or may not ultimately be permitted have become a little murkier. And I, I think that it was in that context that we reviewed that. And uh, Chris and Jeff and I reviewed, you know, whether we would be uh, getting the full coverage and not knowing there was some value we thought for the village to have certainty as to the amount we'd receive rather than getting a, a number that we may have to give back because of the timing. You know, I think Jeff spoke to that earlier that we still don't know what that timing is because IDOT has some role in this. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, I appreciate Trust, it. Trustee Kurtzmeyer has a comment or question. You have your hands raised, raised or a hand. Oh, I, I, I do have my hand raised, thank you. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Oh, beautiful, thank you. Um, I I disagree with Chris that they are butt ugly. That is not my quote. That I that's not what I would talk about. Certainly, they are lacking uh, a a lot of material variety. But I do think that um, to the builder's point, I'm not in the same room, obviously. To their point, I think the market is evolving. We when we say that's not what Long Grove does, I think it's important to think about it's not what Long Grove did. Let's look forward to what Long Grove should do. And I do think that a community that's got a lot more, um, you know, allowing people to stay in Long Grove without the same level of maintenance of a two and three acre property, uh, figuring out a lot of things that have a, a, a first floor master, I think is something that the community needs. I really do. I've, I've heard a lot of conversations, a lot of comments, what people would like to stay in Long Grove, but we don't have the housing that would appeal to them for that matter. Now, that said, I, you know, given uh, the different questions that have been posed about variety, I do think architectural variety is important. You said you're not going to have the same elevation adjacent. What exactly is the same elevation and have you, like, you can actually make that an engineering problem if you want to on, if we have this many different configurations and no two can be next to each other, 
what does that mean for the variety that's possible? If everybody wants the same thing, but you've got to say no to some of them, what does that actually result in? You want to answer that? So uh, say no, what I mean by saying no elevation next to each other is, for instance, uh, just take one of our ranches, uh, the Brunswick, and there's a Brunswick A elevation. So I can't have two Brunswick A's next to each other. Uh, so I'd have to have, if somebody else wants a Brunswick, they have to do B next to each other. Uh, what we've also done in the past is say we do have a home that is more popular than another one. We've actually come back with uh, a C elevation, a D elevation, uh, to further to further diversify the product. Uh, and you do that by a lot of different ways. You mention the color. And we, we make the people with different colors. Right now, we do. So we make it. You, you diversify with uh, different colors. You diversify with brick versus stone, vice versa. Uh, different siding materials, shade versus or bad detail, so uh, different features on the house. I mean, gable versus hips, uh, dormers versus uh, gables. You know. There's a lot of things okay. that we can get try and create a Okay. And can someone help jog my memory? Because when this PUD first came before, it was my first time in office, 2017. Um, was there not some, I know we, we did a lot of work to make this and Karen's corners connect, to feel like they were contiguous, to feel like this might be two different, you know, two different sets of hounds, but that you have pathways that connect. And wasn't there a park somewhere in there or some sort of recreation that wasn't just pathway? Vic, do yeah, you recall the, that? The park is actually part of the final plan on the Karen's Corner side of it. And okay, the, the the two, to try to offer some quick summary of what the integration was. The roads were to integrate so one could travel from one to the other. The mm -hmm. pathways were to integrate. And the park, though located on Karen's Corner, would have a financial contribution in terms of maintenance and upkeep from Deer Trail. And we have that in the required covenants for Deer Trail, that they have to financially contribute to the ongoing uh, maintenance of that park, even though it's located on, or to be located on Karen's Corner. But if Karen's Corner is never built, what is the situation on the park? Um, then there won't be a park. Uh, you know, at some point the annexation agreement uh, will expire, and if it okay. hasn't been developed, then you know we go back to the drawing board. Okay, thank you. That was all my comments and questions. Thanks, Trustee Kurtz. Mark, any of these um, um, intersections with the two? Does that mean they'll share an HOA? No, they'll have separate HOAs, but there is. A, um, a financial contribution that um, Deer Trail has to make to Karen's Corner for purposes of maintaining that park. Karen's Corner is owned by IDOT. Right? Yes. No. no, that park is actually part, part of it. The uh, east of the roadway. Yes. Not the 53 roadway, the, the road, the interconnecting road. Part of it. Part of it was. Only part of it. Yeah, not the whole. Oh, you're right. Like, yeah. A piece I, got, I got bought a portion of what was phase two of Karen's Corner. Okay. Oh, and right. yes, it did not affect phase one of Karen's yeah. Corner. The park yeah. is entirely in phase one. Okay. So it's going to be developed in the next decade. <laughs> um, Kent, you were quiet, or yeah. Dr. Jamil? Yeah. I'm just curious why homes that sell for one and a quarter to one and a half million have asphalt shingles, as opposed to cedar or Da Vinci type material, why it has wood siding as opposed to cement board siding, why it has vinyl windows. To me, that doesn't sound like a 
one and a quarter to one and a half million dollar home. Well, it is though. I, I don't have any better answer for you. I mean, we, we are selling these homes at a price. Uh, the market, market tells us what's possible as far as uh, everything that goes in the house. Exterior materials, interior materials. Well, I think I'm somewhat agreeing with Trustee Borowski that this doesn't really look like a luxury home to me. I won't say it's ugly, but it, it doesn't look like a luxury home. <laughs> <laughs> Can I add, so... But, but, but the market wise I think it's on $5 million home sales that you sell. Yeah. 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 That don't have an offer cost. We rarely have ever. I can count on one hand in the past five to six years, we've done a hall masonry house. And even at that, if you're talking a 10,000 square foot house, somebody who has an open checkbook. I, as I far as think, that goes. I don't think any of us are. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just speaking. I'm, not, I'm, just, he, I'm just addressing yeah. the questions that he had as far as the material. Yeah. yeah. Actually, LP is a better product than cement for it. It's a wood product. It's a wood product versus a cementous product. For the trays, it's easier to work with. You don't have the contamination from the dust and all the equipment that you need to cut cement over that happens. It breaks too easy, and it's three times heavier. Does it require regular painting? Cement board requires regular painting. And there is no such thing as a... My personal design. experience is no. Now, I won't say it never needs painting, but, but, it's but I know that my, it's the same my wood-sided home needs painting like every but, but five it's years. The same it's the same process. If you get it pre-done you know, pre in the shop you know, in the, by the maker, pre-finished, yeah, they guarantee it for 20 years. After 20 years, there's always maintenance on either one. And they'll say that. It's, only, it's not a lifetime warranty on the, on the painting. The other thing is, is even, with, even when trades use cement board, they have a tendency to use LP trim because the cement wood trim is awful. So all your trim boards are LP. So what it is, it's a laminated wood product. Rather than a cedar product, it's laminated wood. And, that, and it's just it's a better product. They cut it with normal materials, trays, they cut it with a typical saw. It don't need any special saw blade or anything else. You don't get the nail pops either, but you get in the cement board. So one other thing I'm hearing is this is an opportunity for Long Grove residents to age in place. I should defer to the realtors in the room, but I don't think most existing long grove homes, with maybe some exceptions, would sell for enough money that someone could just take the money from selling their house and move into this. I know my house, which is a pretty nice house, would sell for about half of what you're asking. There's no way I would sell my house for double what I got for it. By the yeah, we had a development going back to this initially formulated this plan in, in Darien, and uh, I'm sure not too many people in the room are familiar with Darien, so, but uh, very nice community. It's uh, primarily a uh, three-step ranch community. Uh, homes that at the time were probably worth $300,000. And we started with this product there, and we sold 26 of these homes uh, in average Six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars uh, back then, more than double what the typical three-step ranch was selling the property, and, and people, people will there's people who trade down, but there are people who trade up, you know, for whatever you know, whatever their circumstances are, they will trade up for something they like. They are selling. I struggle. I I don't know how much it, uh, how much we should be gauging the market that way. I do struggle. Trustee Jimmy. I don't think we should go into those details because the ultimately the buyer's discretion. It's not finalized yet, so I'm okay. You're okay. I don't I don't think any any of us. Tell me if I'm wrong. Looking for all for is that a correct statement? Yeah. Yeah. I, what I I do hear is is there a way you can make them look like 
horseshoes or test loops? Instead of viewing? I think they are. You know? I mean, it's, you can add more. I, mean, I would like to have the homes here, and, and, and it's not just Long Grove residents yeah. who will purchase them, people from other communities will purchase them. And I know, I know you're in the right price range. I get it. Can you? It's, it's not to say that if somebody wants something and comes in with something, we can't do that. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's, not, it's not to say that the elevations are set in stone. So if you came in, this happens all the time. If you came in, I said, picture, can you, I, I like this plan, can we get this tomorrow? You can do that for plan. So if you want to add, you know, if, say somebody did come in, they want an Albrecht house. You can make it an Albrecht house. There's, you know, these, 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 the lots and everything are, are sized mm -hmm. up as opposed to, you know, temper or um, right. like force where you're right. really restrained. This is the width, this is all we got. Right. You have, there's plenty of land around it where to make those changes and move adjustments like that. We can do it. If they want that, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And for whatever that additional cost would be. Sure. Announced. Yeah, so. DI buys. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And there are some people who don't see waddle. <laughs> there are other people who see lots of waddle. Okay. So if if you if you present one layer cake and I'm hungry, it looks pretty good. But if you present me with a wedding cake, it looks even better. So what what I'm what saying is, yeah. and I, and I, I Maybe I'm interpreting is if you could just dress them up a little bit. I understand it, but it, it also comes when you when you start dressing up like that, the price goes from here to here, and it's just a lot material. Right now, going now if it's up here, I can't sell it. If it's here, I can sell it. And if somebody wants to come in and pay up here, we can make that happen. You know, so that's the other thing, and, and, and the yeah, other thing is like the say, it's, it's one of those things too. The buyer sees that's what they want. If they can't afford that, then what? Well, you know, because you, cause you're putting you're putting the wedding cake out there, and they can only afford the, four, the one. You know, you're saying the one layer. Could use your analogy. You know, I, so I I, I I hear you. I so we can we, we can build up to that. And we can make it happen. It's not say crazy. Okay. If someone comes in, if we do that, it, it's possible. It's perfectly possible to do that. But it's yeah. possible no. they would all look at the way these do as well. Yeah, is there's there, a chance. There's there a chance, and there's always a chance they could all look like that, or they, you know, and, it, and it's it's it's, it's and that comes down to people's. Can, no, can we problem. take some of that risk away uh, of everybody everybody saying, no, no, that's fine. In other words, can, can the product that is presented, and I'm not talking gingerbread, I'm not talking 90s or 80s or any of that. I, you know, we understand it's 2024. Right. I understand it's 2024. Right. But, but certainly there's something a little... Um, but, but, but again, it's, it's, you're kind of feeding into what, what, what people and what trends, again, like you said, it's trends, but this is what you know, people are bringing to us. You know, when the clients come in and they ask for us, these are the styles and these are the looks that they're asking for. You know, this is the whole thing, I mean, case in point, I said, you know, the farm offices that are coming in. White siding, black windows. Yes, up. Everybody right. came in with that. Right. And you know, like you said, it, it, everything has a cycle, and then it goes yeah. back to there. And there are certain the Georgian. You know, we all be offended by Georgian. You know, we all be, you know, that type of thing. But that's what we're kind of gearing towards. Is okay. Right now, in, in, in past products and everything, even moved, as we moved it along, this is what people are buying. This is what people want. So we're trying to give the product, and I get what you're saying, but we're also trying to give the product that will appeal to the most people. Currently, in those potential clients, those potential buyers, yes. and, and, and that's and that's kind of what we put out there. And, and, and to your point too, it's not to say that it can't be different, or you can, we can you know, we can do some stuff that's a little bit more traditional or a little bit more, you know, snappy. You know, can you soup them up a little? You know, part of part of my part of my it, it, this is not a personal thing, mm -hmm. but part of where I'm coming from is. Community that surrounds it. Mm -hmm. You know, as an example, if we could get something in transition, um, I, I hear, I understand. I'm not, I'm not, I would not expect you to build a product that people don't want. That mm -hmm. But it is, and it's also where it's all the point to a building product that people can buy. 
just the downsizing pattern. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, it 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 does. Um, but everything's changed. So there's been a lot of dialogue here. There's two things that have to happen. One is we have a resolution um, approving the amendment to the Deer Trail Annexation Agreement. The second thing is discussion and consideration of it's approving the preliminary and final plan unit development plans for Deer Trail planning unit and development. So these have to be done separately. They require a supermajority. The Annexation Agreement Amendment requires five eyes among all of you. You do have to vote. And I have to vote. Okay, so that's number eight. And um, so I don't know if anyone's willing or wanting to make a motion, but if you are, I would entertain one. To, okay, so uh, moved by okay. Trustee O'Reilly. Second. Seconded by. Did, did you okay. seconded by Trustee Jamil? And then that is a roll call vote. Can I ask you a question? So, so does that lock in the architectural drawings to basically this template? Um, it locks it into. There's more than this template, though. Well, that template is. Um, I, I believe the language we have is in general conformity. We still have our basic anti-monotony regulations that they have to conform with. So this was sort of the, you know, if you remember, well, maybe you don't remember, it's not fair for me to suggest you do. <laughs> Back in 27, 2018, we did say this had to go through the architectural commission. So they, they've actually gone through that process and they did get a recommendation from the architectural commission. So um, that is what, well, the annexation agreement, um, Go ahead. If I, if I, if I could clarify, uh, my name is Hal Frank. Some of you I know and I've seen before, and some of you I haven't. I'm their attorney, and I just want to clarify on this issue. The reference to the architectural drawings is in the ordinance, right? The, the proposed ordinance approving the new final plans, which isn't on the table right now. If the amendment to the annexation agreement is, which is um, addressing the, the issues. The only thing that from an architectural perspective that's in the annexation agreement amendment relates to the front loading garages. Okay. And um, the 32,000 there? I'm sorry? And the, and the 32,000. Yes. 30, the, 30, the, the payment for the payment. road. Oh, no, no that's in the amendment. That's yeah. in the amendment. The, 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 there are a series of discrete changes. Most of those have to do with clarifications and signing. The two things that I would say are substantive, one is the garages. And the other one, which I, I think the recommendation from staff and consultants would be to uh, accept the 32.5 in lieu of the refundable 45. So that, that actually has a benefit, I think, ultimately to the village because of the uncertainty of the IDOT approval process. Yeah. As a reference to the unanimous recommendation of approval from the address commission, that's in the proposed. Yeah, it's in the PV. Not in the amendment to the annexation. There was also discussion about the pathways. Uh, again, that, that's a that's a clarification in the annexation agreement. Um, let me see if I can tell you where exactly. Okay. Um, we we have a provision that uh, refers to the plans that uh, identify the location of the pathway. Or maybe those were the. They might be in the PUD ordinance. I may be. Yeah. Yeah. The width of those are are in the final plans that are in the uh, PUD ordinance. That that's not part of this vote. Okay. So, and one of the questions was, do they get built when the models are built, or do they get built when the two units finished? That came up. Wait, two, the, two the question of the pathways. When when they the pathways they have to be in. have to be put in as part of the overall infrastructure development. Right. But the question was. There's a period of time in there. It's like a year or something. Yeah, we, yeah. It's or, or the yeah. It, there's written language in there. Uh, I remember reading it. So. We shouldn't go back on. It feels like this. It's like trying to to, to pick it off again. Well, but I mean, it's uh, well. I mean, it's. Part. I know it's there. Yeah. Right. Can I ask another question? So, 
Um, so here we have a lot of wetland, a lot of Third. open yeah. space, and we have the pathways. Oh. The pathways going through. Are there requirements in place for the maintenance thereof? Uh, well, they're not in place yet. What we have is the requirement for uh, CCNRs to be developed, recorded, and those will be the ones addressing it. We do have particular requirements of those CCNRs, but usually what we see is that a development will have a series of its own set of regulations, whatever they might be. Embedded in those have to be the provisions that we've identified in the annexation agreement and which are also reflected in the PUD ordinance. The, the provision about the trail, you'll find in section seven, I'm sorry, section eight of the amendment to the annexation agreement. Again, what we wanted to do was to clarify where does it go? Because back in the day, both of them had gotten their final approval, both of them were on the same time clock, if you will, for developing, and then neither developed. And so, in order to allow this to go forward with clarity, we've identified where that path was to be located based on the recorded uh, approvals for Karen's Corner back in 2017. Maybe that was your question. Rita, I'm sorry. I'm addressing it to the wrong uh, member. But yeah, this is a trail and pathways crossed out. And it says six foot minimum and we had eight feet. No, that's the minimum. Yeah. And then it's ultimately governed by the final engineering plans. And the final engineering plans are approved as part of the PUD. Those plans call for the eight foot path in a 10 foot easement. Okay. Page seven of the PUD. Why is it called trail instead of a pathway? What's uh, it, it's actually, it was actually pathway throughout and there was one reference. The reason why that was stricken is that it was an inconsistency. Why didn't you get that? Trail. To me, a trail is. Because it was just how it was. No, no, it was always defined as new trail. But in that one instance, yeah. it showed up as new pathway. I think somewhere along the way we changed the nomenclature and that one didn't get caught. All right. Just, just asking. So we, we have, right, a live motion on the table. Trustee O'Reilly uh, moved it, and it was seconded by Trustee Jamil. This is the consideration of resolution approving the amendment to the Deer Trail Annexation Agreement. Are we ready for a vote? Standing on something? Sure. Make sure I understood correctly. So agenda item eight requires five yes votes? Correct. And Bill does or does not vote? Does vote. Does vote. Okay, thank you. One of the only times I get to vote. <laughs> so we're going to throw a party <laughs> for <after this. laughs> me. So, I mean, are, are we ready for a roll call vote? Yes, this is on the... This is on the annexation agreement amendment. Adam, you want to try this? <laughs> Let's give it a shot. Trustee O'Reilly? Aye. Trustee Jamil? Aye. Trustee Borowski? Aye. Trustee Kritzmeyer? Aye. Yes? Yes? Okay. Did you Trustee not hear me? No, I did. It was it cut out. You said I? I did. Okay. Trustee O'Connor? Aye. Trustee Tanucci? Aye. President Jacob? Aye. All right, motion carried. Okay, now this is discussion and consideration of ordinance approving preliminary and final plan unit development and plans for the Deer Trail plan unit development. Anyone want to make a motion to approve? What? Oh, it's number nine. It's here, it's this big document. Uh, there's all this stuff. What are the rules on this one? This, is, this requires a concurrence of a majority, which is basically a combination of Three eyes and well, the eyes have to be more than the nays. Okay. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> it, it gets too complicated if I went through all the rules. Well, so thank you for clarification. Now this was the one that locks more in the end. This one does provide for those architectural plans that that 46 page document. It's included as exhibit C. And I'll I'll identify the specific reference just so you have it. Um, Uh, it's in subsection 3K. It says that they shall conform with the anti-minority, mm, 
anti-monotony regulations and shall conform to the architectural plans and elevations subject to the following, and that is uh, 16 elevations and eight floor plans, not more than two of the same style adjacent to each other. Uh, they can be rotated on 90 or 180 degree uh, pivot for monotony purposes. Um, they can have two or three car garage, including front loaded, subject to that maximum of seven limitation. And um, not more than 25% of the floor plans can be garage, uh, and they can have modifications to the materials um, in addition to what they've shown. Thank you. I thought that there was a conversation about not just no more than two, but no more than one. That's what we had originally. Well, we have in our anti-monotony regulations, now you're uh, got to get to a different tab. Um, we do have in our anti-monotony regulations limitations on immediately adjacent, but what that's talking about, there's a slight difference. They're saying the same elevation, whereas our anti-monotony um, doesn't allow the same ex uh, essential, essential building. So if I had model 6B3 on, lot, on one lot, I could not have 6B3 on the next. But if I had 6B3 on the one, I could have 6B4 on the next one, but they're saying no more than two of those. I'm just saying I thought that I heard verbally something that's like 63 is never next to 63. Um, well, I, I'll, Go ahead, I'll yeah. let them address it. Clarify what I said before. For instance, we have two Brunswick models. We have a Brunswick A, we have a Brunswick B. We cannot have two Brunswick A's next to each other. But we can have a Brunswick A next to a Brunswick B. Right. Under our anti-monotony, they couldn't have, I, I use 6BX, I couldn't remember their names, but uh, <laughs> um, you can't have the exact same models next to each other. That's our anti-monotony. Gotcha. But you could have a variation on the theme next to each other, um, and, and it could be multiple in a row. It could be subpart A, subpart B, A, B, A, B. They're saying no more than two of the of the model elevation, not the sub model. I, I, I'm not okay. saying this. Well, you got to look at the. Thank you. you. Look no, at the I point. think you confused the issue. What I'm not. What, I'm, <laughs> what I'm hearing is no more than two Brunswick's in a row, but Brunswick A and Brunswick B would can certainly coexist. Right. And all of the other coasts. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. And does our documentation reflect that discussion and understanding? Yes. We have our okay. anti-monotony which says you can't have AA, and then they've said you can have an AB, but not more than two of those. Thank you. Appreciate that. Can I ask one question, and, and, and I, I didn't look for it, and that regards the wetlands. As I recall, those are low-grade Wetlands. And will they be required to refresh them, um, enhance them um, before they're gone? I think that's a Jeff Perry question. It's a what? A Jeff Perry question. Jeff, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. And um, kind of similar to kind of the path maintenance, it's uh, it will be required um, for them to maintain the wetlands on their property and they'll be that deed restricted. That was not the question. The question was, do they have to do any enhancement? Is enhancements? Uh, they don't have to do any any enhancements um, per se, but they do have to treat them and, and maintain them as a wetland. Yeah, that, that, that's not my question. My question is that, as I recall, they're, they're, they're really a low maintenance, a, a low grade wetland. And to leave this neighborhood with a low-grade wet, wetland is just a maintenance headache. And so I'm wondering, I mean, look around several of our places that, that, that are 
year after year are a problem, and and shouldn't this be brought to a certain standard before they're gone? Yeah, I um, suppose that's a uh, a discussion thing. There's nothing in the county ordinance, the Lake County Stormwater Ordinance, that requires enhancements to low low grade wetlands on a property. Well, that doesn't mean we don't need to do it. Well, and, and that, let me that, ask that's question. right. So um, there was a discussion about creating a buffer between the wetland um, and whatever the, the housing, right? So what is that? Maybe you could clarify what that means, and is that providing an enhancement to the wetlands? Well, yeah, and that is that is required by the ordinance. Uh, and yeah, so we think by our uh, maintenance, our creation and maintenance of that buffer, it will secondhand almost enhance the tiger. But the wetland itself, I, I don't. Has anyone walked the property? I mean, what is? I I walked it years ago. What's What's in the wetlands? Is it cat nothing? And... It 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 it's it's very low grade. Okay. So what's that going to look like? I mean, you're going to have the buffer, so that's nice. That'll improve it. What's the, you know, the marshy area? What's that going to? It's It's going to look like how the wetland looks today. I mean, well, I I believe there will be some just uh, residual impact. That, Folks, recall this is an area where it's astonishing that 53 actually has a road over. I mean, and you go a little north of there, the wetlands on either side of that road. I'm astonished that they actually allowed a road there. It's not attractive and it's probably not changing. I'm not sure if that's supporting you or not, Bobby, but I, I agree. It's it's not that high quality. Yeah. So um, not to derail this, but if we go along this lines, what would it take to do something? And maybe Jeff can answer it or whatever to enhance this so that when the homeowners take it over, um, it's of a better quality. So they're not stuck spending thousands of dollars to take care of it, right? Or, or hundreds of thousands of dollars or even a million dollars to take care of it. Yeah. Is that your point? That's, that's my point, yeah. So that's, I think yeah. that's the, the question is, you know, I don't know who can answer that. Well, it's, it, 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 we've had trouble with this. People, people just don't understand what they're undertaking when they, you know, it's like, oh, it's a wetland, okay. You don't know what that means. Well, well, so many people think they take care of themselves. No, they don't. <clears throat> That in the conservancy. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 And yeah. and ultimately it's gonna be our headache. So I I'm just trying to be a little bit more forward thinking on on trying to prevent and maybe slowly do something that that um improves the condition of it. And maybe that tonight is not the night, but somewhere I I'd like to pick somebody's pocket. To, to do something for it for the, the future residents that are going to be there. Maybe that goes in the covenants and conditions uh, of the HOS. Good yeah. idea. Well, that was my question on the maintenance, because again, I don't want to see the buckthorn, peaceful, right. fragmented yeah. around. And what's the new one? A, a waddle? Waddle. 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 I don't know. I thought he was a wide receiver. I mean, what do I? Um, hey, Jeff, Jeff, can you pipe in here? I mean, you did, what have you done on this? Because I know there was stuff about the detention basin and being the right size and all that jazz, right? So any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's going to start with a very good maintenance plan because they are low grade at this point because they haven't been maintained for X number of years. So if there's an active maintenance plan to address you know, the invasive species, they're going to, um, that's going to help it tremendously off the get-go. What it looks like after that, revegetate and things like that, you know, we can take that as part of the next step of that conversation. And what's right, going to so be Vic, required in the CCRs. Vic, help us through here. If, if that's something that the board wants to make a requirement, how do we do that? Um, I, I think that the way to address it is to include as part of, I got to get the right section in front of me, 
Um, By the way, I was a former HOA president, and I know exactly what everyone's talking about here. We're stuck with Pragmites and exotic diesel and, um, gosh, purple loose strife and all kinds of fun things like that. And we still are stuck with and, 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 and we're still spending money, and we should be spending more money. Yeah. I mean, we, we have uh, two different areas where we could address it. One, we have a section on the landscaping plans. And we can simply add a requirement that um, as part of the landscaping plans, uh, uh, they're going to need to submit for review by the village engineer uh, um, wetland enhancement uh, uh, plans for the dedicated wetlands. And then for the CCNRs, we can, right now it simply says it's going to be consistent with the annexation agreement. We can have an including without limitation uh, satisfaction of standards for wetland maintenance. So that we can actually have, instead of just, you got to maintain it, have some benchmark standards. So um, that would affect paragraphs 3i and 3m of the PUD. And with that, I'd make a motion to approve. Well, do we have this right, though, Vic? So how do we, how do we? Uh, oh, it. Just make sure we got it right. We've already done it. I know, but is it right? Do we have it? Do you have it recorded? Uh, um, I, I would like it. I, I would ask that the motion be with the revisions to 3I and 3M uh, as finally. Uh, uh, Drafted. Drafted by the, the village attorney. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Motion made by Trustee O'Reilly, seconded by seconded by Trustee Jamil. Um, roll call, please. Trustee O'Reilly. Aye. Trustee Jamil. Aye. Trustee Borowski. No. Trustee Kritzmeyer. Yes. Trustee O'Connor. No. Trustee Tanucci. No. Um, President Jacob. President Jacob. Do you have a question first? No. You have a vote. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm yes. I'm a yes. Okay. So it's carried. Okay. But so what's your question? Um, I, I wanted to put to qualify. Oh, well, you, you would go ahead and would you please do that? Can, can you? Uh, the, the, my reason is I would like to see 26 lots, 26 different elevations. And the front facing garage to be set back the way we did this the last time for the same reason. Got it. No, thanks for that. Well, motion carried. Um, and I did get to vote twice today, so that's a big deal. <laughs> um, usually, Didn't I don't I get to vote. Um, I know. <laughs> Go celebrate, right? Um, well, congratulations, guys. Good luck with your yeah. development. We, we want to make a proud community. And I'm sorry we didn't get along, but I, I want to prove you wrong in a couple of years. I make friends after the meetings in the parking lot. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We do. We do. We do. We do. Bill, did you vote yes? I did vote yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I did vote yes, of course. Thank you. Good luck. Thank all right. you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Likewise. Uh, village Engineer's Report. Uh, you want to keep it snappy, Jeff? Jeff, yes, I will keep it. Yes, sorry. Um, yes, I will keep it very snappy. Um, the, just the biggest update that I've got is uh, the village hall construction continues to move forward. We've got a meeting with the contractor and the architect tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. We meeting uh, manager Sparkman and myself and the that team uh, to get further updates. Um, and then if there's any other items on the engineer's report that. Uh, You've got any questions on? Happy to take those. Good question for me. Yeah. Uh, let's go. Go ahead, Trustee Kritzmeyer first. Go ahead, and we'll go okay. back. Okay. Um, so uh, the Arlington High, I mean, sorry, the Apticusic Road stuff. I'm seeing sound barriers going up in the Buffalo Grove area. Is that not contemplated in the Long Grove area? Correct. What Is that she, something? I, that you, Sound, sound barriers are oh, like sound, sound barriers, the walls, yeah. 
We have none in Longo. Why is that, anyways? Do we know? Did they pay for it, or did they? Or it's just not appropriate where they are. Um, I don't know it, for sure. It may oh, be a federal there. highway administration standard. If you have a certain density of housing and you're making a road of a certain qualitative size, sound barriers are mandated. Right. And because we have such low density, we may not be within the mandate. I, I don't know if that's the case here, but I know that that is a federal highway uh, administration standard as a general matter. It may not look right either. Yeah, and as um, a part of the noise study, which they did on that one, I haven't reviewed it, but that's what's done to determine if sound walls are needed or not. Another consideration there is the proximity of the houses to the road. So Buffalo Grove's houses may be closer to the widened applicants than Good Long Grove. I'm just speculating, but that could be it too. Uh, that's probably fair, except for there is exactly one property that's on the very edge of the uh, the sunset development. It's technically Arlington Heights Road, but it actually comes off of Aptekistic, and that one just seems like a sad, sad thing. Can you repeat oh, I know that? Which, I, know which, I know which property you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like at some level, you know, it, it seems like uh, extending the sound barriers to the Sunset Grove retail development would make some sense. I don't know if that ship has sailed. Just so make an inquiry. I can make an inquiry to Lake Dot um, just to kind of refresh what, what the decision points thresholds were and um, that very question if that ship has sailed or not. I, I, I'd appreciate the uh, understanding, the logic behind it. Thank you. Okay. 4C, it says waiting confirmation that NEPA is not required. What is that? NEPA, Environmental, environmental Impact Environmental Protection Act, and it requires environmental impact statements. And then it says once confirmed, the grant can be applied for. Is the money available or the ongoing congressional struggling of the budget potentially stopping that? I Definitely haven't heard know. anything. I, I don't know for sure. I've not heard anything to the contrary that it's not available, though. Yeah, well, I know we're in a new budget year, but they keep you know kicking the can down the road too long. Any other questions? And we're getting a no right turn on red. Route eighty-three. Oh yes, yeah. yes. Um, from a discussion a few board meetings ago, we uh, asked IDOT to put a no right turn on red at the Robert Parker Coffin Road and eighty-three intersection, and they obliged. Uh, I can tell you the IDOT's exact words were: "The work order has been put in, but we don't have any timing." And because it's on IDOT property, we don't have to do anything, right? We don't have to vote for this? Or? Uh, to my understanding, because it's an IDOT road, that's where they have the jurisdiction. Okay. I'll put it in. I'll just put it in. That's good news. That is. Yes. Thank you for the presentation. Nagging eventually. If you, if you didn't want it, you could make Robert Park off in one way eastbound. Oh, geez. <laughs> Let's not go there. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's always a way. I mean, <laughs> um, do you have anything else? Uh, if there's no go. other questions, uh, end of report. No other questions? All right. Um, village President Trustee reports. All I will say is that um, there, you may have been, well, we've been copied on a lot of emails lately, but yeah. the one that I'm going to comment on is that um, we did have a good meeting with Camp Canine today. Um, Avalon uh, and um, Dr. Levin and Pinnacle and I think we the RDA is finally moving forward and I think we'll have something before the board probably in a few months right uh, redevelopment uh, agreement for the Geimer property yeah, you may recall that back in November of last year when we yeah. extended Camp K9 that was supposed to have been that before you in by April of this year, and uh, it had, yeah, let's just say it hasn't been, but I think there's been some clarity now, and it will finally, finally, yes. And uh, Dave Jenner held court this morning, and uh, it all worked out. 
So, um, Say that again. He held court this morning. <laughs> and I think he would appreciate that if you listened to the tape. Um, the only other thing I will say, and I know I asked you to do this, that um, we've asked the village staff to move the PCZBA date um, because of election day. The, and, and they moved it to the first Tuesday of November, which just happens to be election day. Lots of commentary on that. So it's they meet on the first and third Tuesday of every month. So they're looking to figure out what that date will be, but we've hoped that it's Can we get a date certain as to when that'll be declared? In other words, don't wait for two weeks. Well, they have to notice it we're, again. We're, there, there's been conversation and communications about that. It's part of the availability of the plan commission members. But we will have to have a date by, I would say, next Wednesday at the very latest. Okay. That's a good thing. And one of the comments was that not everybody adjacent to the property seemed to have gotten that notice. Is this one the, where we could... The, the comment that we received about that related to the, uh, the church. Yeah. And that confirmed that they did, in fact, received notice. There was a green card showing their uh, their acceptance of the certified mailing. Maybe the pastor okay. didn't get it, but somebody signed for it at the church. Okay, the wrong person got it then, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right, end of report. Trustee Borowski. Trustee Borowski. Sorry. I don't know if Mr. Sparkman wants to make any comments about the trash hauler franchise agreement discussions or not. Yes, do you want it? You please, please do. <laughs> no, you, no, you. No. <laughs> um, so Chris and I have had conversations with Walter Willis of Swalco and Mike Brink of Waste Management. Um, we got some pretty large increases, kind of uh, casually. Uh, all, all park estimate. Yeah. Um, very high. Um, so we think it appropriate to go through the formal RFP process uh, with uh, Swalco's assistance. Um, so we have a previously, we have an updated um, bid document that we were planning, we have put together that we would uh, circulate to the haulers or and publish a notice to see what kind of from the other haulers in the marketplace, which there aren't that many of. That's what we've heard from Walter, and they're getting, they're having, with all their contracts that are renewing, pretty sizable increases that they're pulling. Their so they're trying to move everybody from the bleachers to the skyboxes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Anything else? And a report. Thank you. Good report. Question, Jamil. Um, question or comment. If anybody has anything that they'd like to see different occurring with our new calling um, agreement, enterprise agreement, be a good time to kind of voice any concerns you might have. Accomplished him. Okay, there's another one. So actually, Chris and I also had a discussion today with a third-party composting company that specializes just in that. They uh, they basically have a swap bucket program where they will bring you a five-gallon bucket, and then whatever periodicity is appropriate, they'll come back and pick up your smelly, grimy bucket and leave you a nice, fresh bucket. Um, so we're not looking to like implement that uh, as a mandatory thing across Long Grove, but rather a supplementary supplementary thing. Or let me we say that I like to we probably like to propose consideration to make that a supplementary program within Long Grove. Yeah, I can't say that word. Yeah. Yeah. Opt in, opt in. Supplemental, supplemental <laughs> program. Thank you. I'm surprised Vic didn't chime in. You're right. Um, but again, we've had one discussion with one company. There's other ones out there. Um, we could expect maybe uh, to come back to the board as we go through the enterprise contract discussions with this being kind of an add-on for residents who are committed to the um, uh, to composting. Um, you know, a lot of people do it already with the compost bins or their whatever they have in the backyard. Um, right now, you can put uh, food scrap waste into your landscape bags that are picked up if you subscribe or if you sticker within the village. But that landscape subscription is only during the summer months when landscaping is around. Mm -hmm. So this would be kind of a supplement to that. What do you do for the next six months or do you do that in addition to what you're currently
currently do. So there's a lot of options there. Um, the company that we talked to today was very proud that they were able to, to achieve 50 tons of compost within, I can't remember. Like per week. Per week. Wow. Our 50 tons of scraps that go into the compost bin per week. So there's a lot of interesting things that they're doing. And, uh, but I don't know if that's something we can mandate across the village. It'd be something that's probably more of an opt-in kind of program. Is it still in our agreement that people can put unwanted electronics out yes. as long as they call it? What kind of electronics? Can you put TVs in there? Because I, I... You have to call in advance and they pick it up on the first Monday of the month. And it has to be like wrapped in plastic or something like that. What kind of plastic? Like just something to protect it from getting all full of credit. Like if you put it out in the rain, that'd be a problem. Oh. So if I take my TV to Best Buy, there's a $30 charge because of some chemical that's in it. And waste management will just take my TV in it. I think so. Wrap it in saran wrap. Yeah, or whatever. You can take it up to, uh, to a Swalco place. Yeah. Uh, Great Lake. Great Lake. Yeah, there's, there's one in the Put it in the and then drop it. Yeah. Thanks a lot of TV. One on 83 and just north of Peterson Road. Yeah, there's yeah. one in Wakanda too, though. I've yeah. Done. But the easy way is to call them and... Yeah, call them them and well, right. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's the easy way, right, Bobby? Well, I, yeah, we, we had trouble at the call center, too, during yeah. two years of Corona. They thought you want a what? Right. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I won't... Oh, sorry, I, I started something. Who do you have to call ahead of time? Let her know. There's a number. Waste management customer service number. Oh, it, it, it isn't that... It's a different number, isn't it? I didn't. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I didn't think so. I so should, we can. There's an article somewhere. That number. Uh, bring it periodically. So can we just bring it back up again, or get it in our newsletter or something? So it was can, not too long ago. Can we? Yeah. yeah. How much go ahead. Go ahead, Ann. Can we also get it in the news? Like, when can you call? If you think about it, our pickup is. I mean, my pickup is 6:45 Monday morning. So if I want to ask for something special, when are they actually going to respond? You can pick up on Monday. No, Wednesday. We're all Wednesday throughout. Oh, oh, oh sorry. We are, we are, we are, we are, I'm sorry. We are, we are Wednesday. I'm sorry. They're different. But like, when do you call and figure that out? And the other thing is also, um, you made a point about these stickers. They're my request would be that they're actually more attentive to the stickers. I do not have a subscription. I don't need it. And they don't attend to st stickers. I've put stickered bags out there, and this is a sample of one, but I've had to call multiple times to get them picked up. Well, that's a little bit unusual because drivers should be picking them up if there's stickers on them. I get mine picked up with stickers. Yeah, but you have to, I had that same problem, Ann. All right. You have to be on the list. Otherwise, they don't even. They don't even drive down your street. That's part of the inefficiency of of Long Grove, and that's part of the discussion we had with waste management. Um, the subscription thing is a lot easier because they program the drivers to pick right. the route to take. Yeah. But the sticker thing, if they're not pre-programmed, the sticker thing, and you know, random sticker once in a while could become a problem because to your point, that driver might not be looking for it. But they don't even come down your street. Right. I guess I'm the problem. Home. No, actually, Ann, we, we got some data from from waste in terms of the subscriptions within the municipality. Um, we have about 2,700 homes that are serviced, and of those 27, only about 10% are actually subscribing to landscape waste. I'm one, I'm one of them. So it's, yeah, it's relatively a small yeah. number actually. So part of the inefficiency is that guy driving up and down every road for only 10% of the people actually paying for the service, looking for stickers. So that's part of the Part of the mm -hmm. challenge is they be servicing our account. And the sticker program, uh, they told us how many stickers they retrieved or were sold in Long Grove. Anyone, anybody want to guess how many landscape oh. stickers they sold? Not many. Yeah, 50. Well, I bought a bunch too. Right, so it's very few people, right? So 10% are, are subscribing and almost nothing is on the sticker program, which is really. 
kind of interesting. Well, you can put the bags out without stickers and they'll take them? No. no. In theory, no. In theory, no. They want to get paid, I guess. No, I think a lot of us have large lots, and we actually take care of the waste on our own, either through cult, either through composting or burning, or you know, just burying it someplace else. Mine's on my roots. Chris will be chipping on Thursday, I think. So, Trustee Kritzmar, do you have anything for us? No, I do not. Trustee I have a question for I have a question for Chris on when our audit is going to when we're going to talk about audit, but that's. Nothing pressing. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that. I'll follow up with the auditor. All right, Trustee O'Connor. No report. I'm sure it's a grant, so if anybody's sure about federal money or state money, being an election year when I'm getting hurt. Trustee O'Reilly? No. Trustee Tanucci? No. Okay, Village Manager, Mr. Sparkman? Nothing to add. Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, moved by Trustee O'Connor, seconded by Trustee Browski. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Any nays? Meeting adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night.